shop, but actually the next number five, we will go into Denmark and also Federal Iceland. I stand by our college from Denmark, Maris, and also Hala. Hello from Vietnam. Hi. Um, so we do not want to take uh, more time for you all, just uh, a little bit reminder for our surveys uh, with the link and also after this workshop, Nordic number five, we will go in with the Nordic certificates by our mini test, preparing by our local office uh, with the questionnaire. And remember, if you reach out 80% of the correct answer, you will have the certificate by end of the uh, session. So we would like to invite you also for the link to um, complete the uh, questionnaire and also the mini test. And um, with this, I would like to hand over for Maris and also Hala for the presentation to the beautiful Denmark and Faroes Island today. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everybody um, from Denmark. I am just going to share my screen. Uh, here we go. And here. Let's try. Can you see my can you see my full screen or can you see two? Barry, is this still in the presentation? Yes, let's try again. Yeah. There we go. Now you can see the full screen. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, great. So let's go. Uh, hi again, everybody. Uh, you might remember me from last time presenting Sweden to you. So today I am going into Denmark uh, and Faroe Islands as well. Uh, my name is Marie Svete and uh, I live here in Denmark. Um, uh, and uh, I'm very, very happy to show you uh, what the country has to offer. Uh, I'm going to uh, cover qu quickly about our COVID situation, what we have in Denmark here, and then I will show you uh, Copenhagen with some great options, uh, as well as some uh, outside um, uh, countryside and uh, uh, seaside parts of Denmark. And the last, I will uh, leave the true pearl, the Faroe Islands, with a lot of nature. Uh, if you have any questions in, in the meantime, please leave them on the chat and uh, Hatla, uh, my, uh, my manager, can um, uh, answer yeah. them and we will also take them over uh, afterwards. Uh, so here we go. The first slide you can see, this is, uh, this is the most visited place in Copenhagen, the new harbour uh, with the colourful houses. You can see how beautiful it is uh, in here. So that's definitely one place that your uh, clients will visit in here. Um, uh, the COVID situation in Denmark. Uh, so there are some very good news. Um, uh, we are starting to open up our borders. Um, first of all, only uh, to our neighboring countries, uh, Norway, Iceland and Germany. Uh, this will happen from 15th of June. Uh, but it is a very good news, uh, uh, considering how slowly a Danish government has been going on. Of course, we in our business would like uh, this to happen much faster, but we have to take it in uh, baby steps. Um, so that will uh, that will give a good uh, good start for this, um, I believe. Uh, in terms of the numbers, uh, we are we have currently eleven thousand confirmed cases and then the circa 600 heads so we have been able to give the keep the numbers uh, quite low uh, the country has been uh, slowly being reopened over the last uh, two to uh, three weeks uh, where now basically everything is open um, only uh, the bigger events are um, are uh, uh, not allowed and as well the uh, fitness centers are closed but pretty much everything else is um, is open now 
uh, we, we still have the restriction of having only 10 people in the group, which will be lifted um, uh, from next Monday. We don't know yet either 30 or 50. We are waiting for news on that. Um, Copenhagen Airport has been doing also a quite, quite a good um, uh, steps forward. Uh, we used to have only maybe five or six flights per day, but today we have already 18, so uh, it's, it's going good <laughs> direction, I would say. Uh, and uh, the second major um, thing I would also mention for our businesses here, uh, TFTS ferry that runs between uh, Copenhagen and Oslo, the overnight ferry, uh, will start running again from, from 25th of June. It has been suspended until now. Uh, so that's, uh, that's really good news in, in here again. Uh, with that said, I want to say that we are ready for, uh, we are, uh, and our suppliers, we are ready for your guests as soon as the borders are open. You are very welcome to come. Um, uh, our, our teams are ready to, to handle all the groups in here. So now uh, about Denmark a little bit. Uh, this is the map of Denmark. You can see we have a lot of sea in here and, um, and a lot of islands as well. Uh, we have uh, Copenhagen as a capital over here, um, and the Denmark in general is quite a small country if, if you look there. So, but um, some, we, uh, some pretty good um, facts still that uh, we, are, we are founded in the 12th century, and this actually makes us the oldest monarchy in the world. Uh, we have a very innovative um, Nordic cuisine that has started up in, in Denmark uh, together with some other Scandinavian countries um, with our new Nordic cuisine and as well the Danish pastry, of course. Uh, we have around uh, half a million bikes in Denmark <clears throat> because Danish, Denmark is very flat, so it's uh, super easy to bike in here. And as I mentioned, uh, we are so close to the seaside in here that we are um, never more than 50 kilometers away from the ocean. Access to Denmark. So how to access here? <coughs> uh, obviously, Copenhagen Airport is the most um, the best airport in, uh, in the Scandinavia, where we have the most routes coming into here <coughs> uh, from Asia connecting uh, by Doha, uh, via Doha with Qatar Airlines or Emirates is the very famous uh, way to come uh, also by Turkish Airlines or Bangkok um, uh, by Thai, Thai Airlines Airways. Uh, and when you are already in, in Scandinavia, it's very easy to get around when we are co combining our tours uh, with um, um, Within Scandinavia, for instance, I mentioned over here is uh, the Copenhagen-Oslo ferry with, with an overnight. But we also have another ferry which goes from up Denmark to Norway over here, uh, Bergen and uh, connecting uh, Bergen and Denmark. Uh, we have also very good uh, railroads. So if we want to get from uh, Stockholm or Oslo, uh, in bit, um, for instance, from uh, Stockholm, the way is circa five to six hours one way. It's, it's quite a good uh, distance and uh, very quickly to be um, accessible. Uh, I'm going to go through also a few hotels over here. Uh, this one is um, a Comfort Hotel Vesterbro, very ideally located at centrally, right five minutes of the center station and has um, around 400 rooms in here. You can see on the map also how it is. Uh, this is the city center in here and we are right over here with the, uh, with the hotel. So this is very one of the very good options for, for your market. The second uh, will be Scandic Copenhagen, also centrally located. Uh, again, we can see the city center in here and uh, the hotel right here by the lakes with this beautiful view. So these two are the very good centrally located uh, hotels for, uh, for your markets. Uh, when we are going a bit more outside of um, uh, Copenhagen, uh, the first will be the Clarion uh, Airport, uh, which actually is an um, ex Hilton Hotel, so it has a very good premises. It is a four star hotel um, and it has been an international brand, therefore, you can also imagine the atmosphere of being very uh, nice uh, over there. Uh, it's just located down here by the airport, but it's very easy to get. It takes 10 15 minutes to drive to uh, the city center. Uh, and one more, I have uh, Convel Roskilde, 
<clears throat> this is uh, located about 30 minutes uh, from the city center. So you can see the Copenhagen Center in here and the Gonwell Roskilde uh, right over here. Very easily accessible again and has uh, some very good, nice rooms. In general, uh, Gonwell is a very well known brand for the Asian markets. Uh, there, most of their hotels are located um, outside of Copenhagen like this. Which, which gives a very good um, uh, price value for you because you are a little bit outside, but you, you are getting a much better price than inside uh, Copenhagen. This was shortly about uh, the hotels. Now let's go into Copenhagen and see what we can uh, offer in here. Uh, so Copenhagen, uh, I would say this is the city where the uh, new and the old is blending in, uh, together in, in a very harmonic way. Uh, we are a million city, um, we have around million ha one million inhabitants in here, uh, but despite this, we are a very compact city and we still have some really nice uh, areas uh, by the water, like the canals over here, we have the castles in, in the city centre, we have a lot of parks and uh, big areas to actually go around and you, you don't have this feeling that you're in a million city in here. Uh, some uh, main sites in Copenhagen, <clears throat> which I brought out to you to start off, uh, of course, the Little Mermaid, which is the most um, photographed statue in the whole city. <clears throat> uh, going further, the Amalienborg Castle, which is the Danish uh, uh, residence for the Danish royal family. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, again, the ca uh, the. Um, um, Canals, Newham, the New Harbour, uh, which will be seen in air, any tour uh, visiting in here, visiting Copenhagen. Uh, the very magnificent Opera House, um, which is just on the other side of the canal for Amalienborg. So when you actually take a boat tour on the canal, you can see it on both sides and very nice sights. Um, our um, um, town hall square over here, uh, Tivoli Gardens, of course. Uh, Tivoli Gardens is a um, is 175 year old theme park. Um, it's, it's now also national um, a treasure because it holds a lot of restaurants and um, some roller coasters. Uh, and it, it's, you're like walking in a fairy tale, really. Uh, this is also the place where the Walt Disney found his inspiration for his Disney World back in the days. So you can see what uh, uh, what what kind of atmosphere this uh, theme park has. Uh, from shopping site, we have um, the Stroll, uh, the uh, biggest and the longest um, uh, shopping uh, shopping street in the whole world, actually. And uh, the Rosenborg Castle in here, which holds uh, the Danish um, royal regalia and um, the crown jewels today. This used to be the place where the queens uh, and kings lived as well. And as you can see on the map, everything is very compact in here. So it's, it's actually, you know, walking distance really to do all the really nice sites in here. Uh, so that's why I also like to mention that uh, it's very comp compact city. Uh, it's not so big to go around, um, and it's it's ideal to walk or bike through as well as going by bus, of course. Uh, so, what to do in here, uh, Copenhagen, um, when you are as a group? Besides all the main sites that I mentioned before, uh, of course, a canal tour, which looks like this. Uh, this is our um, best sold activity in in here. Uh, we can go around by bike, um, we can um, also sail by Viking ship, uh, by, uh, we can go take, do some beer tasting. Uh, in, in regards of this, uh, our uh, museum Carlsberg Brewery uh, is going uh, under a renovation right now and will be finished next year. Uh, so there will be a completely new beer museum opened up next year. Very exciting, uh, I, I must say, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to go and visit this myself. Uh, as well, food tours uh, or any kinds of uh, cooking classes in here. And outside of Copenhagen, uh, I would uh, recommend some uh, full day tours such as Castles of New North Zealand and uh, going to Odense, or simply actually crossing the bridge to uh, Malmo and then seeing the Öresund's um, 
uh, pearl uh, over there. This is a great trip to do two countries in one day. I will go into them a bit uh, later as well. This was just a short um, introduction. Uh, outside of Copenhagen, just simply maybe half an hour drive only, we have some really nice countryside and parks. Like we have the Tier Park over here, where you can take a horse carriage, or we have some very nice uh, fishing villages with really charming houses. Uh, can be also con combined in into a tour in Copenhagen and with the outside uh, uh, sites of Copenhagen. When before I showed you the main sites, so then I will uh, like to also show you a little bit of of um, uh, the spots uh, that maybe are not so known or are not uh, are not uh, yeah they people don't visit so much but are equally good and maybe even given you a bit more value than uh, than the main sites uh, we'll start up in here with the park uh, the red park in here which has been designed by a famous danish architect uh, by visiting this park, we usually take our groups there to take pictures. It's a very nice place for uh, social media pictures, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, you name it. Uh, uh, and it, this is actually located in an area called Nöbro, which is um, it's really cool and hip area has been um, uh, coming very popular in the past, uh, past few years. Uh, we are recommend to do this tour by visiting this park and some other uh, sites of this um, area and uh, going and seeing some um, small brewers, beer brewers, because this is the place where we have uh, many, many beer brewers over there. So that could be an uh, ideal uh, lunch break or a dinner for, uh, for your group to have some beer tasting with a guided tour and as well um, dining in, in the breweries. Uh, then Copenhill here, uh, as I mentioned before, Denmark is completely flat. We don't have any mountains in here, so the, we can say uh, very proudly this is our first mountain. It's an artificial mountain and uh, it isn't actually a waste plant. So inside here, um, the whole waste from uh, Copenhagen and the surroundings will, uh, is being brought and um, burned, which uh, the heat is then being used again um, to heat up the water in the city, for instance. Uh, but what makes the hill uh, even more extraordinary is the little park in here and the ski slope that has been um, um, built up over there. So here we can actually take a hike. Uh, or we can, of course, uh, ski as well, mountain skiing over there. And uh, there is no snow needed as, uh, over there. Or we can also take the uh, elevator up to here to have a very nice scenic photographic um, uh, photo stop over there. This is completely free to visit, uh, so that could be a very a nice uh, alternative and uh, some added value spot for your tour for your clients in, in Copenhagen or in Denmark's only mountain. Inside, of course, we can uh, uh, make you a technical visits as well. Then I have a Copenhagen, which is an uh, outside um, a sauna area, a wellness area where we can enjoy wellness. Uh, I have a Christiania. This is a, a free land. Uh, or this is um, a place uh, where that uh, in the 70s the hippies uh, were taking this as their home and they are calling it um, their home now. Um, the houses there are built from whatever materials they had in their hands, and they um, um, and this it's kind of like um, our, they they call it on their own country, uh, so called. Uh, for instance, photography is not allowed in, in this place because of its uh, pusher street inside. Uh, but it's a very famous place where they have only a um, thousand people living in there, whereas half a million people visit this, um, this nice area. Then we have the architecture in here and design in general in Copenhagen, uh, where we have some really nice masterpieces uh, to, to do some architecture tour. And uh, we also have the City Peace in here. So City Peace in, is a uh, non-profit organization uh, where we bring our guests to their laboratory, their, um, uh, their factory, to understand uh, the, uh, the bee, um, bee life, uh, why do we need bees, and we also do uh, some honey, honey tasting over there. This has been a very popular tour uh, in the past few years. Now, uh, Danish pastry and the Danish food in general. Um, 
the, the pastry is, is the most famous uh, food that the people from uh, foreign lands, of course, uh, know, uh, because this has been um, sold um, anywhere, really. Um, uh, in Denmark, what we can do, we have some really nice food tours with some tastings, or we also have some cooking classes where we can go and uh, bake the pastry ourselves or do the sandwiches ourselves. So there are many nice options in here uh, what to do. And I really recommend that uh, for any, any groups. Besides um, uh, the Danish pastry and the Danish food, we also have uh, a lot of Asian, Asian restaurants. I brought up a few um, uh, popular restaurants for mostly Vietnamese and the Indochina market. We have, um, we have two very good inter, uh, Vietnamese restaurants, Saigon and um, Bon Chur, Vietnam. Then we have a very nice uh, Thai restaurant, Bun Chai, and uh, Chinese restaurant, Axelbrook Chinese. These are only a few, few um, choices in here. We, of course, have many, many more, but I chose to um, uh, show you also only the most um, um, attractive for your markets. Uh, Christmas in Copenhagen, I will mention that as well, because um, uh, in in Denmark, uh, I would uh, recommend to actually visit any time of the year. Uh, Christmas is this really nice and cozy area where we have a lot of lights, a, a lot of um, um, uh, decorations in the city. Uh, we do have uh, some Christmas markets in here, which are free to visit, where we can go and enjoy uh, the beer or the um, hot wine. And of course, ice skating and so on. Uh, other um, activities in here uh, which can be done. The climate is pretty good in Denmark, so it doesn't get so cold if uh, you're afraid of cold. Um, uh, so that will be a very good option for your uh, markets as well. Now we are going outside of uh, Copenhagen, uh, where I can see Copenhagen here. Now we're going around one hour up uh, to North Zealand, which is um, the famous uh, visit for our two castles, the Hamlet Castle and the Frederiksborg Castle. Um, this is uh, the place where the, it, with the Dani beautiful Danish coastal area also, this was the preferred playground for the Danish royalty uh, back in the days. Then I would also bring out uh, the Roskilde, which is um, uh, again reachable um, with 30 minutes drive. I mentioned the hotel in Roskilde before. Uh, so Roskilde is very famous for its uh, Viking Museum, where we can uh, dress like a Viking, so we can sail the Viking ships, we can see the actual Viking ship that has been uh, pulled out from, uh, the, from the nearby fjords um, and are, are very old. And as well uh, to see the cathedral, which is uh, under UNESCO uh, list um, of being um, uh, the very famous uh, cathedral over there. Uh, so so uh, Roskilde visiting, it will be very good if you actually stay an overnight there. And that could be a very nice either morning, uh, morning tour or an afternoon tour when you have been already in Copenhagen. Now going down uh, from, um, so when we before covered the Roskilde area and the upper part, uh, we also have the South Zealand part where I will bring out um, uh, the most uh, famous is the tower, the new, uh, new uh, Camp Adventure Tower, which was opened actually last year. And this is uh, named by the Time magazine, one of the world 100 best places to visit uh, at the moment. Uh, this tower is 45 meters tall and you can get a really nice 350, 360 degree view from up there. Um, as you can see, there is no steps over there, so it's very easy to accessible also for people who have uh, problems with, with the steps. It has this really nice um, uh, declining um, uh, walk up there. If you're also in um, in a wheelchair, it is uh, possible to go and go up there as well. I would also bring out uh, the um, Stewart's Clint, which is uh, under the UNESCO list as well. And uh, here you can see this um, uh, Kalki Cliffs um, of Denmark. It's a very unique uh, uh, place in Denmark as we don't have so many of them. And in this area, we also have a lot of um, partners uh, from smaller villages. Uh, I brought out here a picture of a, a, a farm, uh, which is a biodynamic farm. And um, uh, there we can go and learn about um, 
how uh, ecological and biodynamic farm uh, has been handled in Denmark, what do they do, um, uh, and so on. So it's a very, it can be also turned into an educative um, uh, trip in here, in the countryside. Going forward, uh, we're going to Odense, the middle island of Denmark on the map. And uh, this is the um, uh, birthplace of a famous Danish writer, Hans Christian Andersen, who I have brought over here. So this city is all about uh, Hans Christian Andersen, where we can take a, a stroll through the city uh, in the footstep of his. Um, or we can also go to an um, open air museum and see how people lived 200 years ago. In this museum, we have some really nice old uh, houses and um, as well, you can see the horses and people are doing the job like they did actually 200 years ago. Uh, a bit more about uh, Odense uh, uh, and the Funen Island in general. Uh, we have some really nice castles over there. Uh, one of the most magnificent is the Esko Castle. Uh, why this is so magnificent is uh, because this is still privately owned. So the half of the castle is um, the actual family lives in there and the second half of the castle is, um, uh, is for exhibition, uh, so open to exhibition. Uh, in the areas over in, in the surroundings of this castle as well, we have, um, uh, uh, we have an exhibition of the vintage cars and vintage motorcycles as well as a really nice flower garden. Um, so that is a perfect uh, place to visit as well. Now we're going up to northern Denmark um, and we are visiting Skane, uh, which is the, the tip of Denmark over here. Uh, this is, um, is, is a magnificent place because uh, you, you, can never, uh, you, can, you cannot see a place other than this um, in anywhere else in Denmark. This is the place where the two seas, uh, the Baltic Sea and the Northern Sea meet, and you can actually see um, uh, the, the line over here. Skane is also a very popular summer city for Danish people, uh, and we have a lot of painters over there. And Skane is also the place where um, there are uh, sold the Skane watches, uh, the um, hand watches, um, uh, the, uh, great for some souvenir, uh, um, to buying some souvenirs with you. Um, one more tip in here to um, uh, this is the place where we can also connect to Norway. So we will have a ferry going overnight ferry to Norway. So if we want to connect Denmark and Norway, that could be a um, great uh, alternative to do uh, to Copenhagen ferry because this is usually uh, cheaper um, and, uh, and you can get a really nice uh, ferry ex um, experience as well in here. We are moving on to uh, the west coast of uh, Denmark uh, and uh, the Riva city, which is the oldest town of the, um, uh, Denmark. In here we have the oyster coast. Uh, so basically the whole coast in here, we also like to name it as an oyster coast because um, we ha do have some oysters over there and uh, we actually send a lot of guests uh, to collect them and to eat the oysters over there. We have some other uh, nice activities there as well. Um, we have a Riva Viking uh, Ship Museum or the old town of, of Riva. So that was um, uh, now I'm gonna, that was the, the Danish part. Um, here I brought you up some uh, nice mono Denmark example by visiting these places that I as also mentioned here. We have the Copenhagen, where we go down to Odense with the um, Hans Christian Andersen area, Riva, and we go up to Skane. Uh, I'm not going to go into this. You will get this presentation from your, uh, your, from your account manager. Uh, but this is just to give you an idea what there is to do in, in here and um, uh, how can we uh, get around with our guests in Denmark. So now I will uh, go on to this uh, very nice pearl um, uh, of Faroe Islands, um, which is um, actually part of Denmark, um, uh, but they uh, operate on their own. Um, uh, they, they have their own language. Uh, the currency is the same uh, as, um, as in Danish currency, of course. Uh, but Faroe Islands is this really unbelievable, undiscovered and unspoiled island and uh, the nature is the one key, uh, key in here, uh, what, what to do and what to see, of course. 
Um, when we go on, um, you, I don't know how many of you know where is Faroe Islands located. Uh, but if you don't know, it's actually okay, and uh, because um, to be honest, it's it's not strange at all, uh, considering um, some facts. For instance, it is um, only six, uh, it is six and a half thousand times smaller than U.S. Or the population um, compared to Chinese population, there is twenty eight thousand. Uh, it's uh, it's less than more than uh, 28,000 um, uh, times less people than in China. So it is a small uh, complex of um, our, our archipelago of the islands. There are uh, 18 islands uh, which are located in here between the Iceland, Norway, Denmark and the um, United Kingdom. Uh, so that uh, it, it tells a lot that people don't know where it is located. The access in here is um, the easiest access is of course by flight, uh, where we can connect to from um, Copenhagen, Bergen, Reykjavik, uh, as well as London. So it can be an, a very nice post or pre to uh, tour to your uh, tour to Scandinavia or UK or uh, even um, Iceland. Uh, yes. Uh, Maybe one a very uh, interesting fact as well in here that uh, when the Faroe Island was uh, first appeared um, in the 13th century in the old uh, chronics, uh, then the name that they brought up to Färöjär, which actually means the sheep islands, um, because there are many, many sheep on the islands and this is also the national symbol of the islands now. There are around 70,000 uh, ships on, on these islands, uh, so you can only imagine how many there are. Uh, here I have some really uh, some examples of the hotels in, um, uh, in Faroe Islands. Um, so Faroe Islands have been uh, booming with their um, incoming tourism a lot over the last few years, therefore they are also building a lot of new hotels in here. Uh, here we brought in this year, uh, which opens in July, is a, a Hilton Garden Inn, a four-star hotel, uh, Hotel Foroyar. It's a very nice four-star hotel. Um, and then again, a one newly opened hotel in here, Brandon, um, uh, in, in the capital of um, uh, Faroe Islands. We have some really nice uh, three-star hotels as well. Uh, we have a lot of uh, bed and breakfasts. Um, so there are different types of um, uh, accommodations in here, but if you have a guest who is um, who who wants an international brand, so then I would uh, say now is the time because we do have the Hilton uh, in in the islands as well uh, from July. So experiences uh, in in Faroe Islands. Uh, Obviously, the key, as I said, or the key selling point in here is the nature. Uh, we have um, a lot of waterfalls over here, a lot of small villages, uh, a lot of space to go around, some easy hikes, some harder hikes. Um, uh, we can discover many lakes. Uh, we can go horseback riding in here or maybe even uh, enjoying a concert in the... Um, in a, in the um, uh, a grotto concert in, in the nature as well. Uh, when I was in Faroe Islands, um, there is some really nice and easy hikes over there. Within a few minutes, uh, you can uh, see some very magnificent view, views over there, so you don't have to be afraid that there are only harder hikes um, over there. Uh, some more activities, um, uh, high speed boat, we have over here, we have some highest cliffs in, in uh, Faroe Islands where we take the boat tour uh, to, to these cliffs to see the waterfalls again and uh, we can uh, enjoy the amazing views by helicopter, uh, fishing or shark fishing uh, in general. Uh, fishing also is um, uh, the main area, the main working area in Faroe Islands where which makes actually the 90% of the export um, uh, of the whole island. And the animal life, of course, uh, and you have here some uh, really cute sheep <laughs> to see uh, that I mentioned that there are uh, 70,000 of these cute sheep walking around over there. 
Uh, apart from the ships, we have some really nice um, uh, birds um, uh, and the opportunity to see um, uh, many different species of birds. There are more than 260 species of birds uh, over there, if there is an interest of that. And now the Torstown, the capital. Um, this is the smallest capital in the world, having only 19,000 people living in there. Uh, whereas the whole um, uh, population of the island is only 50,000. So it's, it's a very small place, uh, very small islands, uh, but uh, a lot to see, a lot to do over there. Um, in Torshound, we can um, visit um, Torshound Cathedral at the National Art Gallery uh, or the Skansen, the old fort of Torshound. And this is, of course, the place where we are staying uh, overnight uh, and where we are taking day trips around the islands. Gastronomy over, over there. Uh, uh, we don't, where we don't have so many Asian foods um, uh, in these islands, we do have few Asian restaurants too, uh, but the seafood then uh, will cover um, uh, all the needs of your clients because uh, we, we know how much you like the seafood. So in here we can offer you um, many different options over there. Uh, uh, we have the fishes, the crabs, um, uh, sh sharks, and and so on. It's, there is so to, so much to uh, to actually go and try over there and get a really nice uh, gastronomical um, experience over there. Apart from fish, uh, the lamb meat as well um, uh, is is one of the main uh, main meats in in the Faroe Islands. Uh, we do have some really nice restaurants over there, and we do have also a two-star Michelin restaurant uh, named Cox. Uh, located very close to Torsham, so uh, the gastronomical um, area is um, is also very growing over there. Winter in Faroe Islands. Uh, summers can uh, can be a bit busy over there, so the winter is also very uh, excellent time to come and visit uh, because the scenery changes from green to white. Uh, we still can do some really nice boat tours um, and we have um, activities such as ice skating and um, uh, and the cozy lights during the Christmas time as well. So here I, I put an example of Faroe Islands. Um, we of course want to take you there for seven days, eight days because there is so much to see in Faroe Islands. Uh, but uh, but the, uh, we know also that your time is limited and uh, may, uh, uh, maybe a trip um, putting together with another Scandinavian country is so three, uh, three days, two days will be an excellent visit actually also to Faroe Islands. Uh, where in, in this itinerary we uh, visit uh, the Torshavn, the capital, we, we see the sea cliff, the Westmanna sea cliff, which are the highest in the northern Europe. Uh, we see the Saka Island and the small villages over there where we can uh, see the, the most unspoiled uh, places of, of the highlands and experience the traditional um, Faroese lifestyle. Uh, shopping uh, over in the islands is very big. I put you a picture of here uh, some knitwear. Uh, this is uh, very popular in, in the islands. Uh, where, where what we can shop over there, uh, we have some example of the jumpers. We of course have some warm socks or hats or um, or any anything really any clothing uh, knitted uh, is uh, ab able to see is possible to buy on the islands over there. And actually, that was uh, that was quickly it uh, about it. Um, I wanted to show you this really nice picture and say thank you of that. Uh, this is the most photographed place in the Faroe Island, where you can see these cliffs uh, and the sea under it, and a really nice lake on top. It really looks so surreal, but it is real. I have been there myself, and uh, it's the most magnificent view of the of the whole. Um, islands i would say so the, with this i would say thank you and uh, i am ready for all your questions uh, about both uh, denmark and Faroe islands thank you maris and uh, this is time i would like to invite our participants if you have any concern or question you can share with us from now in Vienna, our team there will be uh, ready to support you with the answer or maybe can uh, counsel for your upcoming tour.
So we give you a couple of minutes for Q&A session. Maybe in the meantime, I will mention in here also that um, Faroe Island is actually an um, excellent place when we have a smaller groups and um, VIP groups because we can be very intimate, very per, um, um, personic towards the groups um, while also visiting the small local families over there we can actually uh, eat dinner with them uh, so that is an excellent for for FITs or for smaller groups uh, to do that uh, versus uh, the bigger ones um, maybe one point uh, I didn't mention before or it can be also when you have a bigger group uh, selling as a Scandinavia tour you can sell uh, Faroe Island as a uh, post or pre-tour for only few uh, of your um, uh, customers who want to extend their stay and, uh, and see something else. So I think that's our sales team will keep um, follow up with the uh, agent in Indochina for upcoming requests and uh, with Nordic um, presentation with our last fire session um, we would like to close our Nordic destination workshop by now with the, all the destination and we hope that we already bring to you all the beautiful destination and idea to do and for the combination or to do with the Scandinavia and Nordic region. We, um, our sales team are ready to be promote and also to support you with all the information regarding to combination and also the visa support for the destination. And with this, we would like to close our Nordic session. And um, I would like to invite you also to join our uh, questionnaire and mini test for Nordic reason to achieve the Nordic certificate. And um, for our link, and that's I uh, already said in the roof chat, and uh, for our fun switch for today, maybe I also would like to invite Marit to will, um, will present to us three questions for the three winners for upcoming workshop. And then with that, maybe I would like to invite for the question from us to you. Yes. Uh, well, let's start. Uh, yeah. I have three, three questions and if you uh, paid attention uh, very well, I think you know the answers very fast. Uh, so the first question is, um, what is the famous food from Denmark? So I mentioned um, the Danish, Danish uh, gastronomy in, uh, in the Danish part of the presentation. Uh, what, what is the one food that you can find almost uh, all over the world? Yes, we got the uh, first answer. <laughs> Good. So which one will be correct? Patrice or Dennis Patrice? They're both correct. <laughs> okay, so congratulations and to Jimmy from Sayon Tourist Hanoi for the winning uh, for our first uh, startup next uh, upcoming workshop. So we will go with the second one. Yes, it's the second question is uh, how old is Danish uh, monarchy? So that's maybe a bit tricky question. There is no really a number uh, over there. Yes, and we got it. Uh, it's, it's the oldest monarchy in the world. Well, all this in the world. So I would like to uh, congratulate our agent in Cambodia elite uh, with the uh, right answer, all this in the world. Yes. And we come in with the third question. Yes, and the last one and the third one, how many sheep there are in Faroe Island? Very easy one. <laughs> <laughs> We, we did the count just yesterday, so we have a um, very precise number. <laughs> Maybe can you repeat the question one again? Yes. So we uh, not have any answer, yes. How many sheep there are in Faroe Islands? Maybe I can give uh, three options to choose from. 
we got a few. That's um, 174, that's a bit too little. But I will give you three options. Uh, so I will say 50,000, 70,000, or 100,000. Maybe mention one more time. Is there 50,000 sheep, 70,000 sheep, or 100,000 sheep in Faroe Islands? Yes, we got the right answer, and it's uh, 70,000 sheep. Uh, it's, it's a lot, as you can mention, and uh, you can be sure to see a lot of them when you are visiting uh, Faroe Islands. So I would like to congratulate. Uh, Justin Lee for the correct answer and also coming soon is with that one I would like to thank you for Maris and also the team in the North region to join us and present a very beautiful uh, destination Denmark and also Faroe Island and um, with this I would like to uh, reconfirm with you one again for next week Next week, we will skip one day on Tuesday because we will have our own internal training. And I would like to invite you um, to be the next session for Pantis also uh, in charge by our hub in Tallinn to cover Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. And uh, this will be arranged by uh, Thursday, 3 p.m. at 11 of June. And, um, do not forget to join us for the surveys and as well as destination expert certificates by the questionnaire and also the mini test. And um, with this, I would like to thank you for all your participants and uh, we would like to see you once again soon next Thursday. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Hala, and thank you for all. Thank you, everybody. Have a good